Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is week number three in the NFL season. And wow, it's been a crazy, crazy week. The Dallas Cowboys, well, they have, to me, a must-win um, situation, although some people may look and say it's not a must win as much as it is for the Baltimore Ravens. But the Cowboys, if they have aspirations of being one of those teams, uh, yeah, you know what I mean, one of those teams, we got to do a lot better on the defensive side of the field um, than what we've been doing. And this is where our quarterback, Dak Prescott, is holding himself accountable. And I want to go to the tape and listen to Dak and um, – Get your thoughts on this, good people. Your relationship with Jackson for years or what you think of his game and both of you being the top two of MVP last year. Just kind of d describe your relationship and peers. Sort of yeah, I mean, hell of a player. Um, always admire his game, what he can do, his talents. Uh, um, amazing with the ball in his hands, hell of a thrower. Um, obviously, I've watched him, been a fan of him since he was, he was at Louisville. Um, so, I mean, he's continuing to build on a, on a, great, on a great career. Uh, Two MVPs, um, yeah, just continue to say elite player. and under, it's, For me, it's about understanding the quarterback on the other side, what he's capable of doing, making sure that our offense is firing and um, putting pressure on them uh, rather than just letting them go and run an offense uh, at will. Have you had much of a chance to talk to him or much of a relationship with him and things you come across? Or? No, not necessarily. Um, I actually hosted Lamar back in college um, on a visit to Mississippi State, um, <laughs> and that was, that was pretty much it. I mean, <laughs> Um, both uh, I've got a lot going on, so I um, can't say that we've connected since. What's the mindset in the locker room this week? Is it, is it, I know it's week two, but there's a sense of urgency, added sense of urgency because of the last two times how y'all looked at home? I mean, I think any time you get out there, you should, you should prep with a sense of, uh, sense of urgency. Um, you should understand this is your job, uh, and nobody wants to, to, as you said, to lose at home in general. Uh, damn sure not put two back-to-back -back losses. Uh, to start a season off at home, uh, it's important us to get back in the win column. Understand it's a long season, uh, and this is a, yeah. a good team to do that against. So understand they haven't got a win, and they're going to come in hungry. Um, we've got to make sure that we're focused, locked in, and, and uh, on all of our details on, on all three phases of this game. How has Coach McCarthy helped for that end, get everyone focused on the task at hand? Yeah, I mean, simple, just his messaging. Um, on simple, about responding, staying on your feet, are being present. Um, and the task at that at the hand, we can't sit there. We're not going to sit back and, and even worry about last week, really. We grew from it. We've uh, learned from it, moved on from the film. Uh, now it's about taking care of a great team that's coming in. What's the value of leadership council in a situation like this? As in? You're, don't you have a leadership council that met this week? Value of, yeah, what do you Mike mean? Was, Mike was just talking about it. I mean, what, what can that do in terms of? Sending the right messages out to the locker room. We've just got to go out there and play our, play our best. I mean, it's week it's week three. Um, <laughs> I mentioned I mentioned it after the game uh, to you guys. Right, it's about a process, and, and we can't get overwhelmed. Excuse me, we can't get overwhelmed and and what people are writing about us. It, it's simply a process that we've got to focus on getting better each and every day um, with the right attitude that we come in here and understand that we're trying to put the best versions of ourselves on the field each and every Sunday, regardless of what's happened the last Sunday. It's so the you, NFL. You talk about it was a tough game and everything. What, what part uh, do you take the most joy in in weeks like this um, in, in the ability to respond and things like that? This game brings me a lot of joy. Honestly, any time that I'm out there on the practice field, <laughs> the commitment uh, to the preparation um, that I have, that the guys that have the shared commitment, um, it's the ultimate team sport. And, and, and you've got to make sure that you're doing your part uh, and and helping helping each other to do their part, playing compliment, complimentary ball, um, being there for a teammate, maybe in his preparation if he needs it, um, and then just being your best on Sunday uh, and playing your part. You said you felt like you are seeing the game well. That's what you said Sunday after the game. How, how, how do you feel about where the passing game is at and how close it is to taking that next step you want to take? Yeah, it's close. Um, definitely. Um, that we're, we're looking to take that next step. Definitely some plays left out there once again. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I'm seeing it well. Guys are, are doing what we're supposed to be doing. We can be better, a little bit better in depth. I can be a little bit more accurate on some throws. Um, we, can, we can hold some windows longer. I can anticipate a little bit better. Uh, and I think once, once we get that going, 
a little bit more, I think that's where the red zone would just take off. Uh, as I said, we were able to move the ball last week. Um, touchdowns were, were the problem. Not getting the touchdowns were the problem and settling for field goals. So I just think especially in that red zone, being able to hold those windows, me being able to anticipate, um, then the touchdowns come and then we're going to be fine. You know, high safety looks have never been higher in the NFL than they are right now. Why do you think that is and how as a quarterback you combat that? Uh, I mean, I think it's great quarterback play going on right now. Um, great receiver play, I really mm -hmm. should say, as, as much as anything. Guys are, are beating man to man. Um, so, so with that, right, you're just wanting to put a lid on it, making teams go the distance of the field, making them be patient, uh, understanding that with the too high, too high shell, right, you, you, you can keep it all in front of you a little bit more. Um, so, so for us as quarterbacks, right, it's about anticipation. It's about the, the receivers. Their breaking point, holding those windows, allowing us to uh, to make those throws in those spots, and just understanding where the dead zones are in in uh, in this coverage. CD spoke about how he's knocking off some rust with you that might have been addressed in training camp. Where are you? You mm -hmm. talked about helping teammates with their process with him and his process of you guys getting back to form. Yeah, just continuing to communicate each and every uh, day that we're in here, whether it's the film, whether it's something that practice, uh, certain routes to make sure that um, that that. Those, some of those mistakes don't happen again. I mean, everybody break points out the one in the red zone there, uh, and that's a simple mistake that if we're on the same page, we understand what, uh, what needs to be accomplished. That's an easy touchdown. Is that a situation? On the broadcast, Tom Brady said that, you know, after Brooks slipped on the interception, he might not go back to a receiver in that situation. But you did, and you kind of, you know, reaffirmed your confidence in Jalen on Monday in a meeting as well. What's your thought process in, in kind of coming back from a mistake like that for a receiver? My thought process. And, and how you approach. Yeah, just understand, just keep the guy's head up. Uh, we're going to need him. Um, as great as that sounds, uh, yeah, you're going to turn your back on a guy. That's not realistic. It's just, it's just the ultimate team game. That's what I just alluded to. Of, uh, being, at, being there to pick up a guy, I told, I told him, hell, I'm gonna miss some, I may miss some throws, and there's going to be a ball that probably unfortunately slips out of my hand or don't put it where mm -hmm. I want to put it, and it turns into an interception. Does that mean, oh, you're going to give up on your routes uh, next time? No. Absolutely not. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to go back to the guy, trust that guy. He's put in a lot of hard work. Um, he's a young player. He's building. He's growing. Uh, for me, it's about making sure that he doesn't get down on himself. How much, back empathy, in do have, how much empathy do you have on young quarterbacks? I struggle in Carolina. Bryce Young's been a lot of heat. You've been there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, benched? <laughs> <laughs> no, damn sure tough time, especially especially here uh, with you guys. Uh, probably the toughest time is reading or listening to what y'all say. Um, but understanding that uh, you 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 you're writing your story. He's writing the story. It's a young player. Um, and when I say this is an ultimate team game, we're sometimes as good as the guys that are blocking for us and making catches as well. And 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 to be frank, calling the plays. Uh, so so that's not a one. I haven't watched any of their their plays or, or the games other than uh, I guess the first one breaking down the Saints really. But I can say that's not a one man problem. Um, and, and so for him, it's about understanding that control what you control, continue to prepare, uh, continue to study hard. Um, and yeah, keep your head up. He's a, he's a young player. I mean, I've seen tons of guys right switch switch systems, uh, switch coaches, whatever it may be, and uh, really start to shine. So um, yeah, it's about really just knowing that you, if you've got he's gotten to this point by playing a lot of great ball in his career, mm -hmm. and that didn't just go away overnight. So so stay true to it. How has Jake looked, and how much? Come on, Drake, Jake, oh, Jake would be awesome. He's looked great. Uh, he looked great last week. I thought he was going. <laughs> well, you tried me last week too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think if um, you know, it was a, a different game last week, more important game later in the season type deal that Jake probably could have went then. Um, but but he's obviously been out there. He looks good. Um, yeah. So so yeah. Back you in back. August, uh, McCarthy talked about how if there's any criticism he might have of you, it's that you do too much work on top of the normal workload. With the leadership part, how have you learned to maybe not take too much upon yourself? It's hard. Um, it's a line that I'm always balancing, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's a fine line. Um, understanding, as I've said over and over, it's a team game, right? And I'm wanting to make sure that, that my brothers are doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, holding them accountable, um, holding myself accountable first, but then wanting to hold them accountable. Uh, Sometimes it's frustrating, uh, but but so that that's where it's a fine line. Is at the end of the day, I can't allow that to frustrate me, change my game, allow me to press within a game, um, and you just got to stay true to it. Whether it's my side of the ball, other side of the ball, or, or just something in the locker room, um, it's a fine line. But uh, 
I'm going to keep, keep uh, what do you say, walking it. Hey, Dak, what gives you confidence that you guys can run the ball more effectively? And yeah. are there situations where you can use your legs more effectively? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I said that um, after the game, maybe that, right? Uh, me me, me <clears throat> scrambling a little bit more, going to get some plays, whether it be for a couple of yards, staying out of negative yards. Um, Scrambling, making some stuff happen down the field after getting out of the pocket um, has been huge for us in the past. So, so I can't get away from that. And honestly, that just opens up everything else. And in the run game, just got, getting guys all on the same page. Under, the backs have to understand that that the linemen are going for a certain aim and point. It's their job, just as it is for me in the passing game and the receivers, is to hold windows and and to know where the breaking point is. Uh, it's no difference in the run game. So. Um, it takes all 11, and I think the receivers would say, hey, they need to block outside a little bit more or better or um, whatever it takes, but uh, a lot of confidence in who we have. Um, you're, you're talking about a couple of all pros up, up front with some, some great young players and backs who, uh, backs who can do it, so um, it'll get going for sure. You mentioned continuing to trust Jalen. Can you talk about being the leader of the offense and making sure that your group continues to trust the defense after a tough outing so that y'all don't try to do too much? Yeah, we're not going to try to do too much. Um, it's simply about doing our job, and our job is to go out there and score touchdowns. Uh, I think I mentioned, right, um, when, when a team like that scoring, going up and down, it's not about us, damn, defense not going to stop them. It's like, why aren't we doing that? And so, so first it's about us looking in the mirror, holding ourselves accountable before we even begin to point fingers or lose trust in, in the other side of the ball. Jack, names change, coordinators change, but it seems like the Ravens defense yeah. stays the Ravens defense. I mean, if you had to go back to – when you first played him, I think maybe your rookie year, would it be that similar, even if the names are different? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think it's credit right uh, to the front office. I think that's been the same. Um, credit to Harbaugh, uh, what he's wanting to get done and what he has gotten done. Um, been a very talented, physical team for, for a long time. Um, and, and obviously, when you put that offense with them, um, they're, they're a great team. And obviously, you can't look at their record here 0-2 because that doesn't define who they are. Um, so for, as I said, it's about us making sure we go in here and putting the best versions of ourselves up against a really, really good team. What's that chess match like between you and Roquan Smith, the all-pro linebacker on the other side? Yeah, he's a great player, um, smart player, has been in his whole time here, very physical. Um, as far as chess, um, we're, we're going in and playing our game, uh, and that's on them if they, how, how they're going to adapt to that. We're going to be their aggressors uh, and bring it to them. That's Thank it. you, guys. Well, there you have it. So, you guys at home. <laughs> well, maybe, just maybe, Jake Ferguson plays this weekend. We'll see how it works out, hopefully. I just hope that if he does play, that he is really ready to play and it's not going to be a lingering injury because that doesn't help us at all. All right, see you guys at 8 o'clock for our live stream. Peace.